Acts chapter number 19 and uh, verse number 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed uh, through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, Unto then what were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, but th that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Yes. Amen. He said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying unto the, unto the people that they that should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues, and they prophesied. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Hallelujah. That's forever settled in heaven. And I pray, O oh God, that there would be a special anointing upon us today. I pray, God, that you would touch every heart and every life of everyone that is here today. Help us, Lord, that we would be drawn closer to you. In Jesus' name, we ask these things, and we will honor you and give you the glory that is due your name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the word of God. Amen. And, uh, and we, have been, we have been for the last few weeks uh, speaking on a journey to Pentecost. Now this is Pentecost Sunday in the natural. If you look on the calendar, amen, this one is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And uh, if ever there's something that the church ought to celebrate, it would be an outpouring of the Spirit, amen, upon the believers. Amen. We ought to be able to say, that's our Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a lot, of, a lot of things that go on. Amen. That, that there's a lot of different celebrations that's on the calendar. Amen. That don't belong to the church. But I'm thankful today. Amen. That there's one that we can claim. And that's the day that God, amen, poured his spirit out upon us. Amen. At Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And, uh, and so, we, uh, so we began to journey just a little bit, and and uh, and as we uh, as we begin to talk about it, just to kind of just a little bit, we talked about first of all the call of God, Amen. That's needed. Secondly, we talked about, Amen, how that God, after He calls us, there has to be a deliverance, and you don't have to be bound anymore, Amen. Number three, we talked about repentance and what it is to repent. Amen. I feel like that's very important. Amen. Within our walk with God. Amen. And we don't just, amen, we don't just say, I'm sorry, I'm caught, but we turn our lives around and we make a change, amen, within our lives. Amen. True repentance is, amen, the total change, amen, within the life of the individual. Then we talked about Amen. A yoke that we take on. We take off the yoke of sin. And we put on the yoke of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And we talked about the yoke of bondage that the devil tries to keep us under. And... Uh, and if you will remember, for those of you that were here, amen, I had cut out a piece of wood in the shape of a, 
of a yoke. And, uh, and whenever I went and whenever I was cutting it out at home, amen, I, 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 it is something that will, it will stay with me, amen, for a long time. I won't forget this, but I cut it out. And whenever I try, I thought, well, I'm going to see how it will fit whenever I put it on my neck at church as an example. And whenever I did, I brought it, uh, I put a, a grab a hold of it with both hands, and I both put it over my head. I did not continue to stand upright, but immediately I dropped at the waist until I was in this position. And, I mean, it was just automatic. And I thought, that's what the bondage of sin will do to an individual. It would automatically bring somebody, a man, down that it was intended for them to stand upright. Hallelujah. The yoke that we have today is the cross of Calvary. The difference between the yoke of sin and the yoke that Jesus Christ gives us is sin just constantly puts us down. But Jesus Christ, hallelujah, stands with us at the cross and he says, we're going to walk this thing together for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm thankful for the, the yoke that God has given us, hallelujah, at Calvary. Amen. And then we talked in the next message that we preached, we preached about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And without the revelation of Jesus Christ, amen, Pentecost, amen, is not experienced in its fullness. There has to be an outpouring, amen, of a revelation that Jesus Christ is not just a teacher, amen, not just a prophet, but he is the mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. It's God manifest in a human body. Oh, hallelujah. He robed himself in flesh. Amen. And I'm glad today that I know him. Amen. For more, amen, than just a prophet. Amen. That's buried somebody, uh, somewhere. There's been many people, amen, that have tried to be God. But there's only one God that came and robed himself in a human body and came and became like man. I'm thankful I know him today as Jesus Christ. There's an old song that we used to sing sometimes. Amen. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Amen. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. Amen. And then, amen, beyond, amen, the revelation of Jesus Christ, we, we then talked about how the... In our journey toward Pentecost, there has to be, amen, a lesson that we need to learn on prayer. Amen. Without prayer, it's impossible to stay in an atmosphere of Pentecost. Amen. Pentecost is not just a one, amen, one-time experience. But Pentecost ought to be a part of our daily routine. We ought to live in the Spirit. We ought to walk in the Spirit. We ought to follow after the things of God. Amen. And the way that we walk in the Spirit, amen, is by walking in a realm of prayer. That's the thing that will keep us, amen, walking toward Pentecost. Amen. Then, amen, last week we also spoke on a promise worth waiting for. For Jesus had said, you go to Jerusalem and you tarry, amen, until you be endued with power from on high. And I would say that there is a promise worth tarrying for when you receive the Holy Ghost. That's the most powerful gift, amen, that a person can experience this side of heaven. The Bible said it is the earnest of our inheritance, Amen. Now, I don't know if anybody here has ever received an inheritance, but evidently from what we can understand, amen, if I'm, wait, if I'm waiting on dad's inheritance, amen, I, I just will go ahead and keep waiting. Amen. Because <laughs> I ain't going to get much. I don't have any rich uncles or rich family members that's going to say, 
To Kent, I leave my entire estate. I just don't have that happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ain't going to hold our breath on that one. But when I got the Holy Ghost, I got a taste of what heaven is going to be like. Hallelujah. Amen. There's something great going to happen. And the taste that I have, amen, of, of the Holy Ghost, amen, it makes me want to go to heaven more. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So it is a promise Amen. Worth waiting for. And, and by the help of the Lord today, amen, for just a few minutes, amen, we're going to be speaking on this subject, an experience bigger than life. An experience bigger than life. Now, now the apostle uh, Paul, whenever he looked at the disciples of John, he looked at them and, and it was evident to him that they had an experience. He didn't deny that they had never been believers. He didn't deny that they didn't have a walk with God. He instead said, I recognize, amen, that you do have a walk with God, but I want to know, amen, you've stepped a, a few steps closer to God, but what I want to know is have you experienced, amen, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He said, uh, there is an experience, amen, beyond just believing that you can have, amen, that's for everybody, amen. And I want to know, have you received it yet? Because if you haven't, I'd like to be the first to introduce you, amen, to the truth that you can have the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. And they said, amen, we've never heard of any such thing as the Holy Ghost. In other words, what is it? Amen. How does it work? What is it? I, I, what do we do? You know, is it, you know, and then, and, and so immediately Paul said, I see that you, I see that you have Amen. Not had the experience because if you got to ask what it is, amen, you haven't experienced it. And, uh, and so he said, now, you're the one that you were, uh, he said, then he said, okay, so my second question to you is, under what were you baptized? He said, evidently, if you haven't heard about the Holy Ghost, you probably Amen. I haven't had a right baptism, but I can see you're a believer and I just want to get you walking in a way of truth. And so they said, uh, well, we were baptized unto John's baptism. And he said, oh, amen. And if I can put it to, in today's language, he was saying, John, that man was a man of God. And they said, yes, he was. He said, as a matter of fact, Jesus said, and, I, and I'm adding a little bit to it, but I think that I can say it with, with all honesty. I think he was saying, Jesus said, there's never been a greater prophet than John. And they're going, oh, that, you, you got it right. We, we believe in the, John, in the baptism of John. He said, now let me tell you what John said. John said, there's coming one after me who's mightier than I. Oh, hallelujah. And, amen, I baptize you unto repentance, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, John preached about an experience that was yet to come. And uh, maybe those disciples said, you know, I do remember him mentioning that once or twice. Amen. Because John's ministry was only but about three to six months, uh, uh, six months in time. Amen. And so in my way of thinking, they probably had heard that. And so whenever Paul said, let me 
tell you about the Holy Ghost. They said, we remember what John preached. Evidently, this is for us. And so, first of all, the Bible said they were rebaptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then he laid his hands upon them. And when he laid his hands upon them, they received the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. With the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And there was a spirit of prophecy that came upon them. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and so he first of all had to explain to them, amen, that there was an experience of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Secondly, he had to let them know that the experience was for them. Hallelujah. And thirdly, he had to say, amen, again, what we were talking about, amen, when we talked about a journey toward Pentecost, before you can ever, amen, have a total experience of Pentecost, there's got to be a revelation that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so he, so he brought it open to them. Now, I'd like to back up just a little bit and listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 20 and verse number 20. And I'd like to, what is the Holy Ghost? Amen. In John 20 and verse number 20. Amen. And when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Now this is after Calvary, after his resurrection. And he shows his disciples Yep, it's really me. This is the wounds that, that happened because of the nails in my hand. This is what happened to my side when the spear went through my side. And, but I'm alive. And his disciples were glad because he was alive when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them, Amen, said to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Amen. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, so he breathed. He breathed upon them. Amen. Understanding that Jesus Christ is the mighty God in flesh, he breathed upon them very similarly to what happened in the book of Genesis when the Bible said, Amen, and God had formed man out of the dust of the ground, and God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen. I've seen, I've seen a lot of bumper stickers here lately that say, you need to become, and in order to become, come to our church. Amen. Can I tell you, becoming is not a part of the church. Becoming is a part of the Spirit. Until the Spirit breathes into you, you can't become. But when the Spirit becomes a part of your life, hallelujah, you've become, amen, a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Amen. Until, amen, you experience Pentecost, amen, you cannot, amen, become, amen, what God wants you to be. I'm thankful that God has given us the ability to become. Hallelujah. So he breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. When Jesus breathed upon them, he said, I, and if you can kind of, he said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Amen. He was telling them there is an experience, amen, that's similar to happen to you that happened, amen, way back at creation. Amen. Only this time, Amen. I'm going to change your language. You're not going to speak the same. You're not going, there's going to be a difference in the way that you speak. There's going to be a difference in the way that you act. Amen. There's going to be a, a difference in the way that you walk. Amen. There's going to be a difference in, in all of your ways because you have become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so he allows us to come alive, 
Amen. Uh, spiritually, by the breath of God, the Holy Ghost is the breath of God that's breathed upon us. Hallelujah. Amen. If you remember back in Acts chapter number 2, amen, there was the wind. Amen. There was a sound of a rushing mighty wind that filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And, uh, and so we understand that that wind was a wind of the Spirit. Amen. That breathed upon them that day. Now, in Titus, we, we got to understand just a little bit more about it. Because in Titus chapter 3 and uh, verse number 4, there's some people that think that the way that they get the Spirit is by their actions. If I can be good enough. If I can do enough good things, if I can be righteous, then maybe I can get the Holy Ghost. I heard one man say it this way, you don't get good to get God, you get God so that you can get good. Amen. And really that's the way that it is. What he was talking about when he talked about self-righteousness, he was talking about us puffing ourselves up and saying, look at how good that I am. I'm the best guy on the block. And he said, you got self-righteousness when you're doing that. Hey Amen. What you need is my spirit to be on the inside of you. And by that, you will change instead of saying, look at me. You'll say, look at him. If there's any glory that's going to happen, it's going to go to him. If there's any praise about what's happening in my life, it's not me, but it's a work of the Spirit. And the righteousness that I have, it came because Jesus came into my life. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So in uh, Titus chapter 3 and verse number, uh, verse number 4, but after that the kindness and the love of God, amen, our Savior toward man appeared. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done. Amen. It's not the good things that I've done that gives me the, amen, the right to deserve the Holy Ghost. Amen. But according to His mercy... He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. He said there is, amen, a place in God, amen, where we can go that we can have the Spirit of God working on the inside of us. Amen. Let's love the Lord for just a moment here. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray, oh God, today, amen, that there would be an opening of our minds and our hearts. Help every spirit that would try to hinder, amen, a move of the Holy Ghost. I pray, oh God, today that you would stop that spirit and bring a spirit of revival upon us. Let us see, amen, the apostolic revival that you want for us to see. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord, and we praise your name. Let's worship. You deserve all glory. You deserve all honor. Lord, yours is the kingdom, the glory, the power, and the dominion. In Jesus' name, I love you and I praise you, O oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when we praise the Lord, amen, the reason that we pray and we stop just a minute, amen, is because we understand that there is a liberty when the Spirit of the Lord comes. Amen. And so we want His Spirit to lead us. It's not just, amen, trying to, amen, prove something intellectually, but I need the Spirit of God to operate in my life. I need God to touch, amen, within our hearts and our lives. Amen. Amen. So, amen, we understand it's not by good works, but it's the mercy of God that gives us His Spirit. Amen. So we understand the first step, it's the, it's the breath of God. Secondly, amen, it's the, it's the grace of God. Thirdly, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 19, 
Amen. First Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? Amen. And you are not your own, but you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. He said, your body is supposed to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. He said, you don't belong to yourself anymore. Whenever you receive the Holy Ghost, you turn, amen, your life over to Jesus Christ. Amen. The way that you get the Holy Ghost is saying, God, I surrender my life to your will. I surrender my life to your way. Whatever you want from me, that's what I want. Hallelujah. And so it takes, amen, the mercy of God, but it takes a surrender to the ways of God. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the blood of Calvary. Amen. Jesus Christ's blood is the thing that bought us. We've been purchased, hallelujah, with the price, amen, of what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done, amen, within our lives. Hallelujah. You are bought with the price. Your body is not your own. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you. You are of God. You are not your own. Hallelujah. Amen. To receive the Holy Ghost, to experience the Holy Ghost, you've got to understand I don't belong to myself anymore. Amen. I belong to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when we belong to Jesus Christ, amen, suddenly the life that we once lived, amen, we now hate. And the life that we once hated, we now love. There's been a change in us. If any man be in Christ, in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So, amen, we understand that it takes, amen, first of all, the breath of God, then the grace of God, then it takes a surrender, amen, to the will of God. John chapter number 7 and verse number 37, amen, gives us this instruction. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. He that believeth on me. First of all, there's the believing on Jesus Christ. Amen. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of of living water but then he went on amen and said but this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given for Jesus was not yet glorified amen Jesus was not yet glorified he said he said you can't amen receive the Holy Ghost until Jesus gets glory Hallelujah. That's the reason whenever somebody is seeking and asking God and saying, I want the Holy Ghost today, we say you just start loving God and you start lifting up Him. You start praising His name because the Holy Ghost can't be given until Jesus gets glory. Amen. Thank you, God. Well, hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Whenever we begin to give glory to God, God fills us with the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. That's the reason why we say just worship God today. Just praise the name of the Lord today. Amen. There's two things that happens when we begin to worship God and when we begin to love Him. Number one, it gets our mind off of ourselves and it gets our mind on Him. Secondly, we give Him glory. And that's what brings the Spirit of God into our midst. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so it's important, amen, that Jesus be glorified. In Acts chapter number 4, amen, in verse number 31, amen, the Bible said, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and spake the word of God with boldness. 
He said when, the, when they had prayed, amen, there was an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We understand that giving glory to God can bring the Holy Ghost. We also understand, amen, that there is a necessity for prayer to be a part of our life so the Holy Ghost can come. Hallelujah. When you pray, the Holy Ghost can be poured out upon you. Acts chapter number 8 and verse number 14. Amen. There's just a little lesson on receiving an experience, an experience that is bigger than life. Oh, hallelujah. Who would think that it would, that God, amen, would come and dwell Amen. We thought it was incredible whenever it was Emmanuel, God with us. But it's more than that. It's God in us. Hallelujah. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So in Acts chapter 8 and verse number 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. And... Uh, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, and so Philip had went to Samaria. He had preached Jesus. And... Uh, and and they had been baptized in Jesus' name. Folks had seen healings take place. But the Holy Ghost had, uh, had not yet been poured out. And so the people, the Bible said, they called for Peter and John. And these two went down. Amen. And when they went down, the purpose they went down, the Bible said, was so that they could lay hands upon them and they could receive the Holy Ghost. Evidently, somewhere, amen, along the line from Acts chapter 2, there had been some folks that, amen, whenever they got the Holy Ghost, somebody had laid their hands upon them so that they could receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so Peter and John were called and said, why don't you that have experienced the Holy Ghost, the elders in the church, come down to Samaria. Lay your hands upon them. Amen. And when they laid their hands upon them, they received the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. And so we, we understand that the Holy Ghost can come Amen. At times by the laying on of hands. That's why there's times whenever we're praying for somebody that we'll put our hands upon their head if they haven't received the Holy Ghost. Believing that God, amen, will use that in obedience to His Word. Not by what, because of what something that we are, but because of who He is and what we're doing in obedience to His Word. Amen. Again, it's confirmed in Acts chapter 9 and verse number 17. And the Bible said, And Ananias went his way, entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. He received his sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Amen. It doesn't say here that he received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. But when I read amen over in the epistles, he said, I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. He was letting them know, I had a day of experience. I believe that when Ananias put his hands upon him, that the Spirit of God touched a, a man, Paul, even though we may not have seen it written in Scripture. Amen. There was something that transformed in his life, and he was filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful for the day, amen, that God, amen, puts his hand upon us and we get filled with his spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I remember, amen, whenever I was, I guess, about 18. Been a long time since, 
since a, a good, fresh experience of the Holy Ghost had been mine. 18, 19, maybe 19. And we were in, uh, and we were at a youth uh, retreat. And, uh, and uh, we were walking, amen, up and down the aisle of the chapel that we were in at that time as a midwinter youth retreat. And, and we were praying. And I'll never forget, amen, the feeling of the Lord touching my life. Hallelujah. And breaking into that realm of the Spirit once again. It was an incredible moment within my life. Amen. See, because God touched me. Hallelujah. <laughs> and with his touch, there became a refilling of his spirit. I want you to know that God wants to do that to us on, amen, on maybe not a daily basis, but on a regular basis for sure. Hallelujah. We, amen. We, we need to work in the spirit. We don't need to just let it lie dormant for six months or a year, but we need to work in the realm of the spirit and let the spirit of God lead us and guide us. Oh, hallelujah. There's something about, amen, the realm of the spirit. Amen. There's times whenever we, the Bible said, we don't know what to pray for, but the spirit can make intercession. Hallelujah. Amen. Suddenly our spirit, amen, that connects with the spirit of God, amen, begins to flow and we begin to, amen, speak in that heavenly language. Amen. I don't know exactly all that I'm saying. I just know that I'm praying in the spirit and I know that God understands and the answer will be on the way. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so I read in Acts chapter 2 and we mentioned it last week. Amen. But, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. From the time that Jesus ascended into the heavens until the day of Pentecost, there may be a little bit of discussion as to the amount of, Amen. Of days in between. This much we do know. There was a time of tearing. And when that day. Hallelujah. Was fully come. The outpouring of the spirit. Came upon them. Oh hallelujah. Can I tell you there are times when we tarry. Amen. For the spirit. And it may seem like it's an eternity. Amen. But I know with a, beyond a shadow of a doubt, amen, that if you will tarry for the Holy Ghost, if you will wait for it, there is a realm of the Spirit that is promised to everybody. Anybody and everybody can have the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And, uh, and so we read in Acts chapter number 10 and verse number 44. Amen. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. They of the, of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Amen. They... They watched and they listened. Amen. Those Jews that had the experience of the Holy Ghost. They watched as Peter was preaching. Something happened in the midst of the preaching. The Holy Ghost fell upon them. Hallelujah. And these Gentile people that had never experienced that great experience began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Oh, hallelujah. I believe with all of my heart. Amen. You don't have to wait for an altar call. If you want the Holy Ghost, it can come to you at any minute. Hallelujah. At any time. There can be an outpouring of His Spirit that can come to you in the midst of the singing, 
in the midst of a testimony service, in the midst of the preaching, God can pour out his spirit upon you at any place and at any time. I've heard of people receiving the Holy Ghost in the bus. I've heard of people receiving the Holy Ghost, amen, at their bedside. Amen. I've watched them receive the Holy Ghost back at their pew. I've watched them receive the Holy Ghost at the altar. I've seen people come out of the out of the baptismal tank speaking in other tongues. The thing that we understand is it's for me, it's for you, it's for your children, and for them their children too. It's the Holy Ghost that keeps us alive. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We've been talking about, amen, the initial evidence being speaking in, speaking in tongues. Amen. But the Bible talks about being full of the Spirit. Full of the Spirit. Can I tell you something? And I, and I believe, I, I know I'm right on this. If you don't operate in the Spirit, you'll let your flesh rule you. And you won't be so full anymore. And you can allow, you can get yourself to a place where the Spirit of God doesn't mean anything to you. Amen. What's important in our life is that we be full of the Spirit. The Bible said full, but in the other place it said baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now whenever you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you know in the natural, whenever we talk about, uh, about baptism, it's a total immersion. It's a drenching of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, it, it's, you just, you, you can't get any wetter. Hallelujah. God wants us not just to say this is a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night, amen, experience. But this is something that we need to be immersed in day after day after day. It's an experience that God wants us to have every day. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So he said we are baptized with the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter, Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, but you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. So there's, there's two things that will happen when the Holy Ghost comes. Number one, you'll receive a power. Number two, you'll be a witness. Amen. You're, you're going to receive a power from God. And number two, amen, you're going to be a witness of God. Saying, look at what God has done within my life. In Acts chapter 2 and verse number 4, again, the initial evidence that we, that we see in Acts chapter, number, uh, chapter 2 and verse number 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That was the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost. The initial evidence of the Holy Ghost is they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now in Acts chapter number 13, amen, and verse number 52. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 13 and verse number 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. After the initial evidence, there is secondary evidences that you have the Holy Ghost. There are some things that will follow after you receive the Holy Ghost. The first of the things, amen, you might have come in with sorrow. But whenever you receive the Holy Ghost, there is a joy, hallelujah, amen, that is, that is the second evidence that you have received the Holy Ghost. Amen. The initial evidence is speaking with other tongues. The next evidence that you've got the Holy Ghost is there is a joy that accompanies the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And uh, uh, Romans chapter number 14. Amen. And verse number 17. And uh, uh, we just got a couple more seconds here. But I, I, I want you to understand how important that the Holy Ghost is. Amen. And uh, and then in Romans 14 and verse number 17, 
For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So in other words, amen, once you speak with tongues, amen, that's the initial evidence. But there ought to be some things that follow after, amen, that initial evidence. Amen. I, I'd like to reverse it just a little bit. Amen. Just for a second. But the next evidence that you got the Holy Ghost that I'd like to deal with is there is first of all a joy that comes. We watch the person as they begin to speak with other tongues and their countenance changes. Amen. And there's a smile upon their face and they say, I never experienced anything like this in all of my life. Amen. That's the first. Amen. After, the, after you speak in tongues, the next evidence is the joy. The next evidence that you'll see, amen, is there will be a peace. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Instead of turmoil in your life, amen, suddenly there is an evidence, amen, that I've got the Holy Ghost because I now have a peace within my life. Oh, hallelujah. Now, amen, the third evidence that I'd like to deal with, and, and uh, I don't have time to really teach on it a long time today, amen, but the third evidence that you've got the Holy Ghost is you have started on a journey of righteousness in God. Not self-righteousness, but you're trying to be like Jesus Christ. Amen. You're trying to act like Jesus Christ. You're trying to talk like Jesus Christ. You're trying to live like Jesus Christ. You're trying to do anything that you can. Amen. Dress whatever it takes. I want to be like Jesus. I want to act like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. I want my life. Hallelujah. Amen. And if I've got problems in my life, if I'm letting sin in my life, I'm not letting the Holy Ghost shine through the way that it needs to oh hallelujah amen the, uh, that evidence oh I see amen yeah I know you got that initial experience but as you get up from the altar let the Holy Ghost get you now You've been filled, but now let the Holy Ghost get you and let you walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Let you talk in the Spirit. Let you act in the Spirit. Let you dress in the Spirit. Let you be righteous before God. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is in Romans chapter 15, he again reaffirms. He said, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. He said that you might abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Again, he said one of the, one of the attributes that you got the Holy Ghost is you have a hope. Hallelujah. This world doesn't have a hope. But with the Holy Ghost, we have a hope. With the Holy Ghost, we understand this world is not my home. <laughs> With the Holy Ghost, we understand, amen, I'm going to a better place. I have the earnest of my inheritance. I have a hope, hallelujah, amen, of heaven. I have a hope that is beyond this world, amen. Then he said, I myself am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you be full of goodness. He said, if you got the Holy Ghost, you're going to be filled with goodness. You're going to be filled with knowledge. He said, uh, amen, in verse, number, in verse number 16, he said, you are sanctified by the Holy Ghost. You know what sanctified means? Amen, it means set apart. You've been taken out of the world and you've been put in a different plane, if you will, than the things, amen, that the world has to offer. You are sanctified. Amen. Oh, amen. There's no song we used to sing. Amen. It says, oh, don't look for me to go where I used to go before. I don't go there anymore. I found a better way. What happened? The Holy Ghost is on the inside and the Holy Ghost is making me walk different. Oh, don't look for me to say all the things I said before. I don't say them anymore. I found a better way. I don't listen to the things.
things I once listened to. Amen. I'm not going to laugh at some of the things I once laughed at. Amen. What's happened? It's the Holy Ghost on the inside of me that has changed me around and I am sanctified. That's why he would say, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. He said, you were over here in this filthy mess, and I've got you out of that mess. Hallelujah. And I'm going to put you over into a place where you are filled with hope. You're filled with peace, and you are my witness to the world. You should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. And into his marvelous light. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I go to my final scripture. In Acts chapter 2. In verse number 38. I think everybody here could probably quote that scripture. But I'd like to. I, I'm going to quote it too. Then Peter said unto them. Repent. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So he said it's a gift. But then he said, and this promise is unto you. The last thing that I want to tell you today is this, this gift is a promise. This gift is a promise. Hallelujah. It's a gift and it's a promise. You know, uh, I get these little envelopes from time to time, and I don't know, maybe you do, and maybe you do too. I'm sure you do. It says, you have just won this big sweepstakes. I never registered for them, but I won this magazine sweepstakes. And you open it up, and when you read the fine print, it says, if you'll sign up for 20 magazines, maybe you'll get your, 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 your opportunities increase. And I thought, uh-huh. <laughs> First time I read it, I said, man, the Lord must answer my prayer, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, Lord knows I need ten thousand dollars. You know, and I waited for that check to come, and it never did come. And uh, and it never did come. They made a promise that they didn't keep. You know what I do whenever I see those envelopes now? Whenever I see on the outside it says you have just won, I look at that and I go, yeah, "That's not for." And I know there's one in a million that might get it, but hey, that's not for me. Bunch of junks, they're, they're liars. They try to make a promise that they can't keep. But when God makes a promise, you can bring it to the bank. When you open up, amen, the promise for the Holy Ghost. And he said, I'd like to give you a gift. It's a promise that God has made. And when he makes that promise, he wants us to have it. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord in this place today. Let's magnify him. I love you, Jesus. I praise your name, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. You are worthy of our praise and our glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, God, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the way that you have touched our hearts and our lives. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship him. Let's stand together and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I tell you the Holy Ghost is here? Amen. If you'll worship God, the Holy Ghost is here. Amen. I love you, Jesus. I praise your name, O oh God.